We have learned that the way to charge a lead-acid battery is through a two-stage process, constant current, constant voltage. In the first stage, the lead-acid battery is charged at the maximum current that the charger is capable of, and then when the battery reaches a certain voltage, the charger switches to the second stage, constant voltage, during which it tries to maintain the maximum voltage and during that the battery current decreases asymptotically from the maximum current slowly down to zero as the battery is being topped off. By the time the battery is topped off, the current is at zero. When uh, lithium ion cells came along, we were very glad to find out that they can be charged the same way. We were familiar with it. We had the equipment to do it. Yes, it is true that a cell lithium ion cell can be charged in two stages, constant voltage, constant current, constant voltage. But a battery of lithium ion cells may or may not be chargeable through the two-stage process. If the battery is fully balanced at the top, then yes, you can use the two-stage charging, constant current, constant voltage. If, however, and this is more likely the case, the battery is not balanced at the top, then you need to introduce a third stage called the balance stage in between the first two stages. So now you need to charge in three stages. The first one is constant current, the second one is balance, and the third one is constant voltage. Only after the battery is fully balanced, then you can go back to the two-stage charging, constant current, constant voltage. Why is that? If you are charging a lithium-ion battery which is not balanced, the cell voltages will be slowly going up until one cell takes off and hits the top voltage first. At that point, because you're charging the cells in series bulk charging, there is no way to add a charge to the other cells because the current that goes through this one cell also has to go through those cells. And if you tried to do that, you would overcharge the cell that is already fully charged. That's where balancing comes into place. I'm not going to describe balancing in detail because I do so in other videos, but suffice to say that balancing allows you to remove charge from the most charged cell and or add charge to the lowest charged cell so that they can all be brought up to the same level. That uh, balancing is occurring at a given current, the balance current. I'm not going to be talking about the balancing process, but I'm going to be talking about what is happening to the charger during this balancing stage. And there are two approaches. One is where you turn the charger on and off, and the other one is where you reduce the charging current to match the balancing current. Let's look at these two uh, approaches in separately. On-off charger, let's give some numbers to the, uh, as an example. The charger is putting out 10 amps, the balancing current is 100 milliamps. In order for balancing not to overcharge the cells, then the charging current, the average charging current, has to be exactly the same as the balancing current. So if the charger is 10 amps and the balancing current is 100 milliamps, the charger has to be turned off and on with a duty cycle of 1%. For example, 10 seconds on, 90 seconds off. 10 seconds on, 90 seconds off then that 10 amps when the charger is on averaged over the 100 seconds will average 200 milliamps which matches the balancing current. Now that may give you the impression that the BMS has to be smart enough to figure out what the charging current is, what the balance current is, take the ratio of the two and from there decide the on-off uh, duty cycle. That is not the way it works, it's actually much simpler. Instead what the BMS does is that it has two thresholds the first one is the maximum cell voltage, for example, 4.2 volts, and the other one is a lower threshold, which could be, for example, 3.8 volts. Whenever every, any cell reaches 4.2 volts, the BMS turns off the charger. And during balancing, the cell voltage will droop slowly back down, and when it hits 3.8 volts, the BMS turns the charger back on. So as a consequence of these two thresholds, and of the physics of the system, the BMS ends up turning on and off the charger at a duty cycle which, as a consequence of that, happens to be 1% or whatever it takes to make sure that the average charging current is exactly the same as the balancing current. In the other approach, 
the charger has a two way of operating with constant current, either full current or lower balancing current. So it has three stages, constant current, full current, constant current, balancing current, and constant voltage. The constant current balance current has to be adjusted to match the least balancing current of any cells. That is, the balancing for each cell will change from cell to cell because of tolerances. So you have to look at each and every cell and see which one is the one that has the least balancing current. Then you go and adjust the charger for put, putting out that current minus a little bit so that it never exceeds the current of any cell balancing. If it did, it would overcharge a cell. Um, that may seem a most more obvious way of handling the balancing problem and uh, stage for charging. So let's look at the pros and cons of both approaches. The advantage of on-off charging is that you can use any old charger. It doesn't have to have a special low current stage for balancing. All you do is put a relay or a contactor at the AC input of the charger and you turn it on and off uh, with the BMS as need be. The, uh, the other method where you have a charger which has a lower current just for balancing is more complex because you have to have a special charger that can handle that lower current. And uh, either the current is a fixed number that you can adjust or the BMS has to have a digital signal or an analog signal going to the charger to, to adjust its current on the fly. So that's more complex. However, it, does ha it may have some advantages. Without having much proof, I understand that some people believe that it's not very good for a cell to be um, charged and discharged, charged and discharged at the very top with the first method. And it's much better instead to say that, okay, whenever a cell reaches 4.2 volts, from that point on, any more charging current is bypassed around it by the balancing so that it can still continue and flow, flow through to the other cells. And if that is indeed the case that the chemistry of the cell prefers that, then the second method is better. Regardless of which method you prefer, the end result is that it lets you go through the balance stage and then onto the um, constant voltage stage. So let's look, for example, at the on-off method. And the cell voltages go are going up in when during the charging, and then the charger is turned off, they start settling back down, and then back up when the charger is on. The last time this happens, you will see that all the cell voltages are exactly the same because by now the battery is balanced. And right before they hit the top threshold, 4.2 volts, the charger switches over to the constant voltage mode. So the cell voltages no longer start raising and raising, they just slow down, they never reach 4.2 volts, and in fact they start settling down as their charging current starts decreasing, and finally reach the point of about maybe 4 volts, at which point the charger current has decreased down to 0 volts, and the battery is fully charged and topped off.